Hi everyone, Ryan Ratliff here from Mad River Outfitters. We are today we are going to look at a cicada pattern. This is the year of the Brood X, so it's 2021. Uh, this would be the third brood that I've been through. I'm not that old. I live right on the verge of two different broods. So uh, this is a great fly for lots of different things, uh, lots of different situations, but super simple. As you've seen a lot of my flies, they're gonna be extremely simple to tie. They might not be the prettiest, but they're gonna be super simple. So let's go ahead and get started. Vandalism, one of my three favorite things, along with like butter and fly fishing. Nothing better than vandalism. You know this is your own store, right? Oh. Well, regardless, hot buttered lightning, like butter, carp on the annual mulberry run, and my favorite, the like butter mascot, inspired by my apple juice containers Lunchroom High School. Available <laughs> available only at MadRiverOutfitters.com. By the way, we have exciting news. Like butter, hats, and t-shirts headed your way. Stay tuned. Mad River Outfitters does not condone vandalism, by the way. They're all available at MadRiverOutfitters.com exclusively. Before you get started watching this, make sure you hit that subscribe button Leave a comment afterwards, like to know what you think. Uh, I'm sure Dev or whoever else is gonna leave a comment back to you. Um, and if you have any questions about this, make sure you feel free to give us a call here at the shop. All right, just have a B10S in the hook. That's the Gamagatsu B10S. This one happens to be a number four. This is gonna be for carp, bass, maybe some trout. If you do more trout fishing, you could drop into a size six little bit thinner wire gauge, a little more fish friendly, but we need this strong of a hook for big fish and uh, maybe even some cover. So you have some six aught vivas here on the bobbin. We're just gonna get a base down. Nothing fancy here. I'm not trying to get it side by side. I just need to get something that glue's gonna hold on to. So just kind of coat up the hook here, kind of take off where you can't see so much shine. Then I'm just gonna do a simple half hitch or whip finish just to cut it off there. Again, this is all gonna get covered up with glue, so it's not that big of a deal. Gonna trim off my tags. Trim off the thread there. All right, like I said, this is a super simple fly, kind of one of the guide fly type uh, in the guide fly series. So this is float foam, Rainey's float foam, extra large, just basically a black tube, kind of smooth on the outside. And it comes in two foot lengths. This is a, what I have left out of this package. Basically all this fly is gonna be is folded in half float foam. And I'm gonna create segmentations. And then when I get to the front, I'm gonna leave it blunt so it kind of stops in the water. We'll talk about all that stuff later. Sizing wise, you want it to be a little bit longer than the hook shank. So you want it to go out to the eye of the hook and just a little bit past the bend of the hook back here in the back. So that will change compared to the size of hook that you go with. So kind of get that length right there. Gonna just trim off the excess part of this foam. Like to fold it real good right there to get kind of a notch in it so I can see those little grooves right there. One benefit that kind of helps this out getting started is if you take some of your Z-Mint or Zap-A-Gap or some sort of super glue and just put it right in that little crease that you made when you folded it in half. Just a little bit of a touch of that and that's gonna help get this folded over. So a little bit of glue there, I'm just gonna fold it, make sure it's even on the tips and just hold it down for a couple seconds. The segmentation that Brood X has those uh, black or the 17 year cicada has the black body with the orange segmentation. So this is a bright fluorescent orange vivus. If you want more realistic, you might use a rust color orange, but once we put glue on it and it gets wet, it'll get a little bit uh, more dull. 
So I just kind of folded that down, see how it's kind of glued together. So this is kind of a tricky part, but you're going to take the thread. I don't even have this on the hook, but I'm going to take the thread and lay it right over the top of that. And I'm going to create the first segmentation. Do two wraps, pull tight. Not that tight. Say float foam three times fast. Float foam, float foam, float foam. Dang. Don't break your thread. Try to keep your wraps right one on top of the other there when you're first starting. You're basically just making a segmentation. So you can check it out, make sure it's good. Once you get that there, you can do a hand whip finish or you can actually use a tool. I just do a quick hand whip finish, just two turns, pinch it down with my finger and pull it down like that. Trim off these two pieces. So basically all I'm doing is creating a segmentation there. It doesn't matter if you got tags or anything like that hanging around, uh, you're gonna trim those off in a little bit, so. Next I'm gonna kinda look here at where I want my next segmentation to be. And typically that is gonna be right above the hook barb with the B10S. So I just make a little bit of thread there, started that on the hook this time. So my next one, gonna kinda eyeball where I want that to be. Couple wraps over top, just make sure I'm still where I'm at. Wanna be right there, little bit of tension. So that's four wraps over top. The next one I'm gonna cut through the middle. I'm gonna turn it towards you, just so you can kinda see a little bit there, like that. See how I crossed over the top and tucked it in underneath. So go one more, then one more over that way. Now, this is important move. I'm gonna tighten this up underneath. I'm gonna tuck these threads up underneath here. My bobbin, tuck them up underneath. This is a little bit tricky at the first part, but I'm just pulling it back, over wrapping on it right there. Over wrapping it on it like that. All right, then just one more to lock it in. Lock it down. Okay, so it's not glued in yet. It's just kind of right there right now. It's fine, I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna space up my thread. I'll turn it so you can kind of see it there. And here, I'm gonna space up my thread and start my next segmentation. Work it through, kind of eyeball. Is that where I want my segmentation to be? Yep. Still going kind of tight here. As you tighten down on this float foam, it'll compress more. And as it compresses more, it will scrunch in the thread. So you wanna make sure that you start your first ones fairly tight. But as we put these segmentations, it's gonna be looser and looser and looser. So it's not so cindri cind uh, so parallel, cylindrical, thank you. So. Uh, we'll keep it so it's getting fatter and fatter. The, the cicada is fatter at the head than it is at the tail, so it doesn't really matter too much, but kind of want to make it look somewhat realistic. All right, so I did a couple wraps there. I'm going to tuck this in underneath again, folding back these pieces and make those wraps. Get your tip of your bobbin in right in tight there. Coating over top. Going to take a look underneath. Yep, still got lines. Nothing's too out of place there. Good over the top, step it forward again. Depends on your size of, size of fly, size of hook that you're going with here on how many segmentations you want, but you typically want at least four. I think we're gonna have, we're gonna have five orange ones here, five orange segmentations, so. And you're just repeating that same thing, cross over the top, Reason why I cross over the top is it keeps my lines perfectly flat on the bottom of where the fish sees. Again, not that it matters too much, but you just at least want it to look nice. Just make sure I'm not having too much slack. Do that, and then I'm going to wrap back underneath. All right. Back over the top, cross over again, space up, and this is my last orange wrap, and this is where we're gonna put the wings in. 
get started. This one has hardly any tension on it. All right, hardly any tension there. Nice and good. All right, so what I'm gonna do before I put the wings, I'm gonna make sure that we're perfectly parallel to. I'm gonna put some glue. So again, I got my super glue here. This is a Zap Zement, which is nice because it doesn't dry immediately. It dries pretty quick, but not immediately. So I'm gonna hit each one of these little threads intersections to the hook. Just like that. I didn't get any on the underside for that first segmentation, hit it there. That's just gonna help lock it in. Uh, I'm not gonna put it on the top because when I lay the wing, it'll stick right to the wing. Mistake that I've done before. So, all right, so now my wing. You can get as realistic with the wing as you want, but typically what I wanna do, uh, I've seen people use crystal flash, all kinds of different things that are stiff. But when they die, these cicadas die in the water, they don't lay with their wings all perfectly back. That's how they sit on weeds and stuff. Their wings are all over the place. So I want a little bit softer material here. Again, I don't think it matters too much, but at least I'm getting a good silhouette. So a couple things that I use. I use the EP Silky Fiber. So this is a real soft synthetic. If you have Parapost, any type of synthetic that's long, and not too stiff would be totally fine. Polypropylene yarn would be okay. It's a little bit stiff, but it'd be okay. And I like to have a little bit of contrast in the wing to give it depth uh, and make it look a little bit like veins. So I just put a little bit of the crystal, or not the crystal fiber, the EP sparkle in there. This happens to be in, carp in copper. So went ahead and prepped that out, a big long piece like this. See the two different sections there, just laid it in. I didn't blend it in or anything. It's fine, it doesn't need to be that precise. Uh, you can also, you could fold this in half like this and get two patterns out of it, which I will do. That's the length cut right off of the, pulled the sparkle right out of the bag or the length cut right off of the zip tie with the, the silky fiber. So gonna kind of hold it right in the middle, lay that right on top of that orange thread base. I'm gonna do two wraps and let my bobbin dangle. Then I'm gonna take this and I'm going to cock it kind of diagonal like that. Make sure they're even links. And then I'm gonna hit that spot right in the middle with some super glue. So right in at that joint. That super glue is gonna do a couple things. It's gonna help fuse a synthetic to the foam. Make it super durable. Again, this is a guide fly, super fast, uh, super durable, floats real well. So I'm gonna let that sit just for a second. Now I'm gonna take this front piece of this wing and I'm gonna fold it over the thread and then wrap over top. So glue's still tacky, which is what I want. You can kind of see how the wing is back and forth like that. All right, so everything is all set there. Everything is glued in real good, sticking, sticking together. Now, I don't wanna compress this too much because it will smash down on the foam and create loose spots on the thread. So I'm gonna use a whip finish tool here. Make sure there's hardly any tension on that whip finish. Come in, again, it doesn't need to be a lot because I'm gonna glue over top of this, so. Cut that, I'm done with the orange thread at this point. I'll grab my bobbin with the black thread here too. That's what I'm gonna use next. Just double check everything, make sure it looks okay. Gonna hit this joint here with some glue just so that knot doesn't slip out. Right across all that. All right, we're all good there. Now, you wanna make sure that you peek underneath and that you're not crowding the eye when you put in this last section. The last section is gonna be black. There's no orange in the head of these flies other than their eyes. So this is gonna be black thread and this is how I'm gonna attach the legs. So I'm gonna tie this in nice and loose. Again, I don't wanna compress this down too much. Get about three wraps or so and then just trim this off. 
Okay. Now, rubber leg wise, there's all kinds of different options. You can go a hot orange. You can go uh, this barred grizzly like this. Uh, if you want to be super realistic, you might use a more rust color leg. Uh, like I mentioned, rust color thread, but I like to just have some nice bright legs. So I'm going to measure these out. You want these to be roughly two lengths of the body. So this is that flat, medium sized rubber leg. And I'm going to cut into this. I'm going to cut two pieces. So I just make a slit at the bottom, then I stick my thumbnail or a fingernail on two of the little pieces there to separate them out. And then I just peel them off. So then they pop right off. So this is, just double check, make sure you don't have any tacky glue there. I'm gonna lay this right in the middle of this black thread wrap segment right here. Make sure it's right in the middle there. Again, I'm not pressing down a ton because it will compress that head. Don't wanna do that. All right, so now this is when uh, you can take your thumbnail and split each end. Just stick it on there and pull. Kind of splits, or you can take your scissors and poke in there and slip it out. But I like to just put my thumbnail in between and just pull just a little bit. Now I can zip these down, zip these apart like this. Then you're going to grab one for one side, slide it over to the middle of the foam. Slide that one over to the middle of the foam there. Kind of get it an eyeball, take a look. And then I'm going to give two wraps on this, and I'm going to just enough till I start to see them compress in. Just enough till I see it compress in. All right, one more. Just make sure your thread is nice and tight as you go across there. Not, not too tight, but perfect tension. All right, so at this point, everything is done. I'm going to uh, tie off the thread, and then we have some trimming work and some glue work to do. So I'm going to fold this back. Typically, you can see the eye of the hook there. Again, you don't want to crowd it, but I'm just going to take the tip of the bobbin and poke that thread underneath there to kind of get a couple wraps around the hook shank. And then I'm going to whip finish this in. Um, when I do the whip finish, I like to place my thread over top of that tension screw on the Renzetti. Just kind of holds it there out of the way. So whip finish, you kind of swoop back your legs, all that type of stuff. Try to do it all in one motion. Two, three, or four turn whip finishes will be totally fine. One, two, three. All right. Come in and cut the thread. All right. So at this point, the tying part is done. Now we just have to do a little cosmetic stuff. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to put the glue on this piece that I just placed in. A little swipe of that. Don't want to get too much glue on your rubber legs, even though the, although this Z-Mint is, is okay for on rubber. It doesn't, doesn't treat it too bad. All right, so you can see that you got a little bit extra here. You can see where the eye of the hook is. It's kind of pushing out a little bit past the end. This is where I can trim it off. I'm going to put away these scissors, pull out the big loon primes, and I'm going to trim this up. I want it to be flat, but I don't want to. Hurt. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to cut my legs. So I'm going to kind of do this. Eyeball it here out to the the nose of the hook so I can feel or the eye of the hook I can feel my hook right there I'm right up to it I can feel it bump up to it I'm just gonna trim those off you could size it up if you wanted to to be perfect but at first but again this is a guide fly we're going super fast okay so now I need to make a couple little sockets here for the eyes to fit into so I am going to just come in and clip off a flat piece on either side of this float foam. Little pocket there, little flat piece for the eyes. So you can put eyes on here if you want to, you don't have to. 
I just happen to have these living eyes from Flyman the, in the red or the fire. Uh, you could use a more hot orange. You could, if you have some UV orange, um, UV color, like little solar res color orange, you can put some on there and hit it with that. Um, all kinds of different types of options. So these are the six mil eyes. Just kind of sit it there. I almost said kind of eyeball it, but that's kind of funny. That's dev humor. Uh, we don't do that here. So, okay, so I'm going to just see how that fits there. And I'm just going to drop a little bit of super glue down for a base. Then I'm going to lay the eye right on there and see how the leg kind of kicks back just a touch. That's kind of what I want it to do. Just lay right there. I'm going to coat this over with resin to make it super durable. So just hold it there for a second. Again, it's just tacked in, just tacked onto that side of that flip phone. We're gonna coat it all over, make it super durable with resin. All right, glue. Another eye. Make sure you don't touch the super glue and then touch the eye, because then it does not turn out very well. Just gonna hold it there for a second. These cicadas have like these big, big eyes out on the side of their head. So it's just tacked in, out on the side. Now I'm gonna take some resin. There's all kinds of different types of options you can do. This is just some bone dry here. Uh, Cause it's thin, it's a little bit chilled. So it's a little bit thick. Uh, but you just don't want to put too much on there. So make sure you clean off your brush good. And then you're just going to coat over this, this eye, fill in kind of the little bit of the gap that's around there with a little bit of this real thin resin. Coat over the eye, coat the front face. We're just going to do one at a time, hit it with the light. Do the other one, hit it with the light. Anytime you're using, uh, especially the bone dry or any of these resins, they're toxic. So you want to make sure that you usually have a fan next to you or you can at least blow some of it away. You don't want to inhale that stuff because it can cause some reactions. But any thin resin would work just fine. All right, that one's set. Same thing here, filling in this gap around the eye, over the eye, going from there. This is gonna just create more durability. All right, it's not gonna win any beauty contest by any means, but it is a very effective, quick fly. Obviously, when you're tying it, you're not gonna talk back to the camera like this, but it's gonna look fairly realistic. It's gonna have some of the things that you wanna see in a cicada. Uh, notice my wings are a little bit offside, lopsided there, so I'm just gonna trim that off. What's its name? What's its name? Oh man, Katie, Katie wanted me to call it the Cicadi, but I didn't want to steal that from her. So I think we'll call it the Cicada Nita. Again, some of my flies don't really have a name, but my daughter's name's Juanita. It's a little tiny fly. We call her Nita as her nickname. So Cicada Nita, there it is. Not the Cicada Rita. That sounds disgusting, but maybe something, I don't know. <laughs> but Cicada Nita, there it is. Super easy. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Give us a call here at the shop. I'm sure you've hit that subscribe button, but if you haven't, go ahead and hit it right now. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. 
and check out these videos. We think you might like them too.